So hi, it's uh, it's been a bit of a minute, hasn't it? And I know if you're watching this in the future, at the end of the playlist, it probably looks like nothing happened, but it's been about two months since I was able to film the last episode because some life stuff came up that really didn't impact me at all, but uh, it made it so I couldn't film for a while, which is ironic because this is supposed to be the final episode. But there's a second problem, and that's that, well, the server died. Just completely and utterly. They got to the point where it couldn't stay up for more than about an hour at a time. And then it just immediately irrevocably crashed with no real stack trace whatsoever. So we couldn't even really track down what was going on with it. So I've taken a local copy. I've nuked all the dimensions and I've now run it on my own computer for now. But that's caused some weird feelings for me because now I've got things like this trading hall in progress that nobody can use or see ever again. And it's just caused a kind of giant spike in Mellow Colony. So I guess we should probably just get on with this and wrap up this series, huh? By which I, of course, mean we should finish the rainbow here and actually get the mycelial reactor made today, huh? But there are some things we need to take care of first, because while we can make the mycelial reactor and output 25 million RF a tick, what's the point if we don't have anywhere to store it or any way to transport that much power to begin with? So to that point, I think we're going to hurry up and just make a mechanism induction matrix with the top tell induction cells to hold a ton of power, as well as multiple induction providers to push a large amount of power all at once. And that's going to be our first step, except we have an obstacle because there's one thing we need for the induction matrix that we do not currently have. And that is lithium dust, which we need to make the basic induction cell. Now, there's basically two ways we can make the dust. One, we could do it with libchem and make it via their compactor from chemicals. Basically sort of like alchemistry from Glacial Awakening or anywhere else you might have seen it. I could go do that, but uh, that requires work and a whole lot of machines, and I don't feel like engaging with that if I'm not going to continue with this pack. So instead, we're going to do it the mechanism way by crystallizing it from gaseous lithium which comes out of a thermal evaporation tower, which we've done before, back when we did Inimega 2 Expert, because it's also the, ne the first step before you make tritium to power a fusion reactor. And that opens up the consideration of where do you even want to put this, because if you're going to make tritium, you kind of want to put it somewhere that's always going to be sunlight, kind of like the end or the mining dimension or something. But in our case, we don't care. We're just making lithium. So I think I'm just going to put it around the corner up on the hill there. All right, so I've already got the first tower set up here. This one's converting water into brine. I'm using the advanced tower setup, which has the advanced solar panels up on top. But down here, you can see that it's taking water from sink and putting it straight into the thermal evaporation tower. Click on the controller and you can see that it's turning water into brine and that we're full and it's generating it at a fairly decent rate or it would be if it wasn't full. The max height of these towers can, is 18, but they do work if they're as high as three. They need to have a completely solid base of thermal evaporation blocks. So you you can see that it's all the way around. It's not like the Tinker's Construct smeltery, and you can just build it up from here. All right, so I added another ring, added two valves on the controller, and you can see that it instantly formed as soon as we put the third one in. Now, I should note that the main thing that this takes is just a whole bunch of steel for the most part. The valves require the control circuits, but we've got all of this well under control, as well as the evaporation controller itself, and it just requires a bucket. So from here, we do the lazy thing of building one more layer and then taking a builder's wand and just putting the other 14 up on it until it's at the same level as the other one. Whoops, one short. From here, what we're going to want to do is take the brine out of this thermal evaporation tower and put it into this one to turn it into lithium. And then we just link them together. And then it starts transferring the brine immediately. We can go over here and you can see that it's now taking the brine and very slowly creating lithium from it. Now you can see that it has very little heat right now and that its production is actually at zero because it's not hot enough. Now I could put a resistive heater on this on one of those empty valves down there to get it to heat up, which is actually pretty easy to make. It's just some tin for the most part, but they require power to run. And there's another easier way, something we've already automated with something that I was showing you up there, where we can put those solar panels up top. And all you really have to do is knock off the four corners and just put them down. And with all four hooked up, you can see that the temperature is now rising dramatically. And well, we can't even see how much it's producing because now the lithium is maxed out because it's actually producing it quite quickly as this heats up. So now what we need to do is put a rotary condensator into the mix to put turn it in from a liquid to a gas. We cannot extract from the same valve that we're importing in, so we'll have to put it on a separate one here. And we'll also have to pass power to the rotary condensator. 
And with that now hooked up, we can go into the rotary condensator, and you can see that I now have lithium turned into liquid lithium, which now we just need the crystallizer, which luckily I have right here. And we can just put that down right next to it because it's right under another node, which we'll need to connect and give some power. And with this now all set up properly on this node, make sure that this is set to the correct operation, which this arrow was reversed last time. We now have lithium being made at a fairly decent rate. I should also note that I do have max upgrades in each of these right now, so this is speeding it up. So having let this run for a while, we have gotten up to 700 of it fairly quickly, actually. Which is good because the induction cell recipe requires 256, but we can make these pretty quickly in the scheme of things because right now it's actually waiting on the energy tablets and the glass more than anything so this will take a second to finish but we'll just burn through all the rest of this and make all of this probably within about a minute which was honestly a lot faster than i was running into with enigmatica 2 experts so i'll take the win here all right so i made four of the cells two of the providers and some ports to get power in and out of it and a whole bunch of casings. And we're just gonna drop it right here because frankly, it doesn't matter where we put this because we're going wireless. So to make this, you basically just need any rectangular shape at all to store it in. And much like the thermal evaporation plant, the outside container must be complete walls of the casing. However, the center will be hollow and the hollow parts where we're going to be putting the providers and the cells. Now that we've got the casings in, we're going to drop the cells and the providers in. It doesn't matter where in here they can go. You can actually yank these out, upgrade them, and put new ones in, and they will pick up whatever power they had in them previously. These don't need to be next to the ports. They just need to be on the inside. And from here, we just seal it up with the ports now. And now it completed. And now you can see that we have a capacity of 6 trillion Fe, which is effectively RF. And coming in here, you can see that it has nothing in it right now and nothing charging at all because it's completely useless until we have some means of getting power in and out of this, right? Well, this is the second problem because this, if we come into the industrial matrix and go into the matrix stats, you can see that it can transfer over 100 million RF a tick, which is good because we need to be able to transfer 25 million at a time. But how can we do this? Because the power cables we use can't transmit 25 million. We could potentially do it with AE2. I believe there's an, I believe it has virtually no real cap. But instead, I think the better way of doing this is to get into flux networks and go wireless, like I had said before, and make some wireless plugs and flux points to go into this. And the big thing here is this requires flux cores to get started. And flux cores require flux dust which requires tossing some redstone onto some bedrock and smashing it with an obsidian block. So I guess we need to go ahead down into the basement, huh? On one hand, it's a good thing I realized we'd have to come down to bedrock eventually and made a tunnel down here a long time ago, but you would have thought I would have been smart enough to put a warp plate down here just to get down here faster because that was a long walk. Anyhow, what we need to do is put obsidian up one block from the bedrock, throw out some redstone dust and then just left click the obsidian and that drops the block there and this is super tedious you know what i went back with my base i brought a warp plate back down i can now easily get back and forth and i was going to automate the flux production even got around to making a block breaker and a block placer brought down an energy cube for some power and then realized that a i need a dropper of some sort to throw the redstone out and b i need something to left click the obsidian and then i started looking into it and i realized there's a couple different solutions i could use the deployer or whatever it's called from create or there's solutions for modular routers or integrated dynamics and then i just remembered something simpler there's no real limit to how much flux you can make at once I just made a ton and we don't need that much right now. So um, today's lesson is you don't need to automate everything, folks. So a quick lesson in flux points and flux plugs. As said right here, flux points draw power out of your flux network and put it into a machine. So this is your wireless input. Flux plugs take energy out of a block and put it into the attached machine. So this is how you input uh, power into a battery. So in this case, we're gonna put the plug right here and the point right here. Now you notice how they're gray right now. This means that they do not have a network set. If you right click on it, the first thing you need to do is go over to network selection. And if you're me, you see that a whole lot of people got to flux networks long, long before I did. But what we need to do is hit the create new network button and we'll make it, I don't know, blue because I like blue. We'll make the password password because this is local and there ain't nobody else here anymore. 
and then we'll come to the list and we will select my network. We'll set this to bypass the limit and then we will set priority to, I don't know, something high because we want power to come out of our reactor and into here. Then we will open up the flux point and basically do the same thing where we just need to go add it to our network and this will now output power to our network as well. Also turn off the limit because there is a max limit otherwise that is settable. Right here under transfer limit, you can just change this number to whatever you want. But ultimately none of this matters till we make the reactor and we have to do two other things first. We need to make the two reactors that we have not done yet. We need to make the pitiful generator right here, the one that we skipped because it's terrible, but this is required, however. And we need to make the ender mycelial generator, which is also easy and we just haven't gotten around to it. But this one needs either ender pearls or eyes of ender, of which we are of course gonna do the eyes of ender because we already have the recipe made in AE2. All right, and with those two now made, I have to go do my favorite part and get blown up putting them in. This is gonna be annoying. You know, or I can remember that I could, well, shut most of them off by just turning off the inputs. So this is now all set up properly. We're exporting the eyes vendor up here and we're just dumping wax blocks into the pitiful generator. So now all of this has power. So all that's left for us now is to actually make the mycelial reactor, which turns out is pretty easy at the point we're at because we just need a supreme machine frame, which we can do. We need some exocether gas. We need another star, which, well, we've got all of that. And then some diamonds and netherite. So this is doable, although we're gonna have to manually prop it up in a dissolution chamber, but at least we don't have a recipe locked into the one we use the supreme machine frame. So we can just toss everything in here and then just watch it very slowly go over the next 30 seconds. And there we go. My silly reactor done and immediately pulled out. It's a good thing I knew where it was going. And I think I'm just gonna slot it into this spot right here on the wall. And assuming everything is done correctly, it should work. And it's not working, but it might not have detected all the ticks yet. So yeah, looking at it, it's probably waiting for the halitosis generator to kick off because this one runs for quite a while. So I might have to wait till this finishes, which is gonna be a couple minutes. Nope, I'm wrong. I completely forgot one of the generators. We need the rocket mycelial generator yet because I am not capable of remembering everything you need to do. And this one won't show you what it actually uses, but it eats rockets. Yep, I just set it on the ground, tossed a general rocket into it, and this instantly filled up with power. So we'll get that set up somewhere else in a second, but let's get the power been used. We need to grab a flux plug to tell it to use this, set this to a network, make sure that this is set to, set to bypass the limit, and now we can see the mycelia reactor is empty and that my induction matrix now has 125 million Fe inside of it. From here, let's take the other point that we had and put it on this ultimate energy cube that's powering most of my base, set up its network as well. So, you know, it helps me remember that you need to use a configurator to toggle the induction matrix to input and output. I also put the output into its own network to differentiate between what's coming in and what's coming out. But now you can see that it's completely, it's drained a large chunk of this into my energy cube. Well, I just swapped the pitiful generator for the rocket mycelial one, and it turns out that you don't actually need to make the pitiful generator. This actually works just fine. So now if we look in the induction matrix, you can see that it is now just constantly ticking up tons and tons of power. Although if I were to keep playing, this might become an issue because the generators upstairs will eventually uh, fill up on power because the battery they were going to will now no longer empty and I would need to rewire those to come into the induction matrix. But uh, that's not a problem for me because I think this is where we're going to call this series because this is the biggest accomplishment I wanted to do. Now I will say that the mycelia reactor does have a problem that the rainbow generator from Extra Utils 2 does not. These do not take redstone signals of any sort. I've done some testing with them and it just does not work. There's no interface on them for it. The best you can do is change the inputs on them. So what this means is all of the help and documentation and tutorials you'll find on the rainbow generator that let you limit the amount of materials you can use going into this to throttle its usage to only be active when the mycelia generator would kick on to generate its 25 million don't work. So if you're playing a pack that doesn't let you automate dragon's breath specifically, I would, uh, I would seriously consider not doing this because that's the one component that's really awful to get and you would have to get it manually if there's no way to make it or create it. So that's always fun. Anyhow, I think this was a pretty great accomplishment and something I've never done before in all my time playing modded Minecraft was never making a rainbow generator. And now I have, and now we have ridiculous amounts of power. And uh, what are we gonna do with that, huh? Well, absolutely nothing because, wh wait a minute, what's that? 
What, what is even going on here? I, I know I said I missed radioactive bees at some point, but this is, this is a bit ridiculous. What is even going on? And what is that? No, 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 no. What is this? Oh, no, no, no. I think it's a nuke. Oh, this is bad. 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 No, 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 no. I'm not sure what I did to upset the bees so much, but uh, I'm pretty sure my base is gone and I don't actually know where I am now. But as I was saying, with the server dead, it didn't feel the same to be continuing to play all the mods aid anymore anyways. So onwards, upwards, on to new and better things, right? I'd like to thank everyone who joined the server and played along with me, and everyone who's been watching and enjoying these videos. Thank you, and as always, I'm... Wait, what, what's going on? Where am I?